Welcome to the Weekly Muse. And once again, I'm your host, Tanya D. Thanks for joining me. And on today's Muse of the Musing Show, or the news of my Muse, it's all about creating your sacred garden and how this came to me. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. So if you're watching me on the replay or are new to my live show, my musings are random. However, they do circulate. And I invite you to check out my What's Up Tanya D Facebook page and like it. And my YouTube channel, Tanya D, for my weekly musings and videos. What is a sacred garden? Recently, I keep having visions both in an awake and in a dream state, which I shared in an earlier muse with you, visions or clairvoyance, and it literally means clear seeing. I was physically unaware of what was happening in my neighborhood, but psychically was being shown. After a week of seeing the same vision, everything soon fell into place. My first vision was all sense data. The words kept flowing in my mind's eye. Then a triangle appeared, golden. Data for me is information from another realm. Sense is all the physical senses of touch, smell, hearing, seeing, and tasting. Plus energy sensing, which is clairaudience, clairsentience, clairvoyance, and clair empathy, which transfers into kinesthetic, verbal and visual gifts. Basically, psychic sensitivity, which then also subdivides within two other categories, being physical kinesthetic gifts that help you to function in your body and your everyday life, and spiritual kinesthetic gifts, which link you to the divine and the world of spirit. And I utilize these senses both in the physical and the spiritual or the outer body. And awareness is the land of all our intuition in spirit and soul, igniting, inspiring, infusing, and utilizing all spiritual gifts. After the triangles, all sense data equals awareness. Now, I, I kept seeing circles, but let me back up a bit. Triangles are a trinity. They're connected to the number three, your beliefs. They're related to the pyramid, its creativity, mental activity, and the connection to the divine, the source, the cosmos, whatever you wanna call it. And the triangle intensifies and actually can amplify energy. But you have to be careful about what you energetically put into it. It can increase debt or abundance, disease or healing. Seeing the triangle was within a place that needs change and transformation. Knowing that this triangle wasn't broken or spotted, I knew it was coming from a much higher perspective. And the three reflects optimism, the number of creation. It brings the beginning and the end together and it ends chaos. It establishes boundaries and environmental invasions. I am just going to focus on the positive of these signs and messages, not the negative ones. I sense we have enough downtrodding in the world these days anymore, and I want to uplift, inspire on the information highway, hopefully changing lives, and awaken you to your own spirit. Now, most people associate the color yellow or gold to the solar plexus or the third energy center or chakra, which also carries vibration and it has a meaning too. The solar plexus is where all our self-worth, our confidence and our will resonates. It's our intellect, it's our wisdom, it's acquired knowledge. It's the brightest of colors, it's a young color, it's an action color, it's bright like the sun and it strengthens our nervous system and our metabolism, along with aiding conditions of the glandular, lymphatic, and the digestive system, 
and it stimulates our intellect, it boosts our cheerfulness, and last but not least, it uplifts our confidence. I'm using all the colors in every center, like a rainbow, and they all need to be active and resonating and merging and in sync. Now, circles create a space for safety, a boundary too. So after the circle, I then became aligned with stones again in a circle, something that you create on an outdoor fire pit. And in a circle and protecting the fire so it doesn't spread. But within the circle was a flower growing at this time, and I didn't actually see the stem, just the bud. Again, hello, it was circular. As I connected to the flower, the word started flowing. I was in the center and I was protected. Basically, I'm the bud. Then, next to the petal was it, my environment, my home, my neighborhood, and the community all within each of these little petals on this bud. And within the community was each neighbor's home and everything they hold dear to them. Another petal showed my friends, my family, people in the community, and each petal represented a part of my being. As the petals started to flourish, other flowers started to burst up below the first one and bloom, still all circular in the center, different things, work, career, duties, etc. Then, weeds start to appear. Weeds representing things you need to remove to keep your garden, ultimately, your environment healthy. Pulling weeds, if they don't get out of control, can be a task. Weeds can be our negative thoughts, our negative emotions, darkness, doubt, worry, etc. But in my case, it represented the big corporation coming in to destroy my sacred garden. After having this vision for days, it seemed, I received notice that things were happening in my backyard, literally. For those of you that have never been to my island or my home, I live in a secluded neighborhood community, small, where a creek flows by in the near distance. I hear it throughout my entire day. Birds of all kinds, owls, woodpeckers, quail families, and many more, dragonflies, butterflies, even bumblebees, chirping, singing in their language all day long. I even wake up to the sounds of nature, usually around the crack of the rooster. However, their sound isn't quite as abrupt as the rooster. Trees that surround my oasis, swaying high in the sky, swaying in the wind, singing their own song too. Creating a wall to the outside world, it's a barrier of tranquility. They provide amazing comfort surrounding my oasis. And this notice was quite disturbing. The family that owns the land behind me directly has almost five acres, almost six actually, up for sale. And a large corporate developer wants to create luxury apartments. Truth is, studio and one bedroom, about 500 of them. And my area already has a plethora of apartments everywhere. However, they need the city to rezone for the apartments to happen. Right now, it's zoned as a single family residential. They want it rezoned for four stories, and actually it might even be five story apartments, about 50 feet high. Now you know where this is going. Not only would the apartments ruin my seclusion, more importantly, they'd be destroying the environment and my nature habitat. The area only has one road into it, not good access for the apartments for emergency vehicles as it is, so getting in and out would be a problem and come at a cost. Besides losing a small piece of heaven, the buildings being 50 feet tall, can't say I want that as my morning view, not to mention the loss of the bountiful trees and the sounds of nature. 
I realized shortly after my sacred garden is at stake. Feeling the loss of the environment, these weeds are getting pulled. To maintain the integrity and the intuitive conversation that I have with the elements, it's in nature where we all transform, connecting to and with it is vital to our overall well-being. So I ask, how do I protect my sacred garden? Stones symbolize the wisdom of the earth. The Native Americans call them the grandfathers. They have been around the longest and hold the memories, the knowledge. They strengthen, hold, and toughen. They hold other elements in place as well. Circles promote healthy relationships, harmony, and connection. A circle envisioned between two people or more or living beings invites an exchange of energy. And if the energy is bright and loving, the swap is positive. However, if it's dark, it's negative, and the exchange is hurting you and creating a problem. Establishing a circle around ourselves or through any or all of the energetic boundaries emphasizes wholeness and actually it sends love to others. It also, more importantly for me at this moment, creates a sacred circle, a protected space that only love can enter. This circle of my sacred garden was showing me to keep my garden secure and protected. I need to bolster the healing energy of the environment. And as an energy intuitive and holistic medium, this circle is deflecting the negativity of the corporate illusion that wants to manifest in my surroundings. I am protecting and setting boundaries for my sacred garden and for those that are around me the garden of my neighborhood and my community. The stem of the flower is the central axis of which all the other parts are attached, the leaves and the reproductive organs too as well. They do many things. They support the plant, which in this case is me, metaphorically. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows not the flower. As an amateur gardener myself, the most critical element of good gardening is your soil. Your soil is your base. To apply that to life, your soil is where you are, not only physically, but as a person. Your soil is your base, your foundation. And just like with growing a plant, there are times that you need to change your soil to get the absolute most out of your plant, which is you. Give your soil what it needs. There are very few places in the world where you can just dig a hole, throw a seed in it, and expect a plant to grow. There are factors like nutrients, pH, and minerals that all determine how viable the soil really is. That being said, with work, you can take the leanest soil on the planet and make it fertile. It takes work and the right components, but it can be done. Our lives are the same way. There are things that we can add to our existence that will make us grow in ways we didn't know we could. Things like taking up a hobby or meeting new friends, find the things you love in life, and make them a real part of your life. There is a huge difference in knowing that you need something in your life and actually making it a part of your life. Now, mind you, the soil in my vision wasn't in need of being changed. It was in need of protection. A flower is like a person affected by their environment. So you have to strengthen yourself even if you as a person feel abandoned. Each element, shape, number has a message and a purpose. So ask yourself, do you see signs regularly? Whether it's numbers, animals, an element, how do they speak to you? Go ahead, comment. I got to know this stuff. I'm getting all passionate here. 
Feelings and emotions and sounds, they are the first language. And when I have conversations with Didymus, my little boyfriend, the fur baby, my senses are my emotions. We all have conversations with our pets. We even go ahead and change our voice to accommodate the conversation we're having. I don't know about you, but when I talk to Diddy, I change my entire tonality every moment based on if I'm angry at him and he knows better or if he wants to go on a walk. I mean, you've seen me, those of you that have, and I'm sure we all do it. I am not the only one. There is just no way. So just like Sir Didymus, when a baby makes its first sound, the mother instantly knows what the baby is expressing. It comes through as an emotion, scared, fear, hungry, needing a fresh diaper. Our speaking language is learned later, so pay attention to your emotions. They are the key to your entire well-being. So, I ask you these questions. Have you? Have you listened to the song of the wind breathing ideas in your direction? So I ask you, have you felt the earth below your feet supporting your goals? So I ask you, have you seen the flowers that remind you of your own beauty within? So I ask you, have you observed the stars that cradle your dreams? Have you befriended a tree? Have you let the flow of water on you wash away your fears? Have you allowed yourself to fall in love with your beautiful self? Have you offered the fire to take your messages to the divine? Have you walked a mountain trail and let it caress your intuition? Have you met an animal and let it revive your natural instincts? Have you surrendered your fears, anxieties, and stresses to the womb of the ocean? Have you given yourself permission to live and love? So I ask you, have you been healed? When I return from my reindeer shaman adventure in Mongolia, I will be forever protecting my sacred garden. I muse that you should protect yours too. If you haven't subscribed to my list, please do. I do weekly podcasts. This year it's a nature series. I also have a musing email weekly with tips and all sorts of musing there, plus my musing live show, which you see me weekly. And if you're on the replay, you can go search and find them. And coming soon, which I'm super excited about, and I know all of you are questioning when Soliciting Solitude's going to jump out. But Soliciting Solitude and the Energy Body Demystified, you can check them out at the library of my courses. Check out the library of courses at the club.tanyad.tv and you'll be part of a group of musers on a private Facebook page. It's exclusive to members of my musing club. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for musing with me. I hope I inspired you to take care of your sacred garden. Go ahead and comment, like, share, subscribe, and show the muser some love. Have a great day, and I can't wait to hear about your sacred garden. Thanks for joining me.